I was just cleaning up the shutter blades in preparation to putting them back on the mechanism plate which I haven't lubricated yet and I see that these, those marks that are on those blades that I assumed was graphite grease or something that, that marking doesn't want to come off and I strongly suspect that that's related that one of these blades is scuffed over the other one I don't know what could have caused that it looks like a scuff mark but it might be a stain of something I'm going to have to polish these blades with metal polish anyway to clean them because they look too marked which came as a surprise to me because everything else was looking quite good and one of the shutter blades this one here has a slight dent at that point which suggests to me that it wasn't seated correctly when the case was put back over when it was reassembled and as a result that blade has been caught pinched between the blade actuating or the, the blade actuating ring or the mechanism plate and the case the uh, so I'll, that's that's a bit unfortunate that'll probably straighten out but anyway I'm going to polish this stuff up with metal polish and I'll see if I can get those marks off I'll start with that blade since it's got probably the most pronounced marking on it I get, yeah you can just see it there and I'll see if I can polish that, uh, that mark out I'm by no means confident that I will be able to it doesn't look good to me If it's some deposit, that'll probably polish away. Well, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it did polish off. So I've got to go through these blades to even get that to catch the light. Yeah, that mark did polish away. So I'm going to polish these blades, then I've got to clean them carefully with naphtha before I'm ready to reassemble the shutter. I'm just going to use a bit of graphite powder to lubricate that mechanism plate. I just want to work that in that appears, appears to be fine, that's moving nice and smoothly and I'll blow the excess powder away and then I can assemble the shutter right well there's the mechanism plate all cleaned and lubricated I have my shutter blades all cleaned and ready to put back in place And those marks that I was concerned about polished out. So there was some sort of deposit on the blade. I have no idea what they were. They were shiny, silvery looking marks. I've got no idea. It honestly looked like the blades had scuffed through the, uh, the black finish. Yeah, that's all in place. And now I've just got to put the case over the top, which of course only goes on in one way. It goes on here. There's three case screws. Do these up very lightly indeed. In case one of the blades had become dislodged when I was putting the case back over the top. 
which of course is what I suspected happened to one of the blades on a previous occasion. Yeah, very lightly done up and check that the blades will close smoothly. They do. Do those three screws up snug. Check the action again. That's good. Those blades, as you can see, are nice and clean now. And all of that, uh, those funny marks have gone completely. So I'm just going to put a wipe of molybdenum paste on the detent spring for the blade actuating ring. Where it runs over that pin there. And a couple of other spots for good measure where the main cam picks up the blade actuating ring to move it open and move it back again. That looks very good. And I can now start reassembling the control components to the top of the mechanism plate. I'll start by putting the springs back in place on the mechanism plate. I really need a better pair of tweezers than I've got here because these ones are getting a bit old and tired. Right, I'll hold my toothpick over the centre here so that spring cannot get away. I'll lift the tail of the spring up and knock it behind that other post so that this lever and this lever are now both sprung loaded. We have the return spring for the B lever. That sits around a groove on that post. And I can fit the B lever in position if I slide this blade actuating ring forward. Get my B lever and hook it into that spring and pull it into position. Like that. The retaining screw for the B lever has the spring on it for the flash sink setter setting lever. get this in position, get the spring on the right side it's always a bit awkward the spring is pushing you away from where you need to be making sure that the B lever moves freely and it does and swing that tail of the spring right round and back to the inside of to the, the lens tube here I hold up the B lever with my finger, I can pull that back. That's that part done. Have pallets. There's the pallet wheel for the flash sink. And the little sector gear that drives the pallet wheel. And I'm just going to put a wipe of molybdenum paste on the catch on the end of this where that's latched by the mechanism in the cocked position that goes there now I notice that the, the flash contact post there is sticking out a long way now, certainly more than it should do, I'll bend that back shortly get this thing on its post anyway get this in position swing it around that way and fit its return spring, its return springs quite strong it's be hooked over the post at this end stretched out and into the hole at the other end so that, that will latch when the shutter is cocked and as the shutter is released 
the pallets run down and operate the uh, the mechanism. Hold back the B lever, I can pull this back to the closed position. Yeah, and put these three components in place. And first, I'll give them a quick clean with some naphtha. They should be free from oil. Back shortly. Right, starting with the settings lever here. I'll just give that a wipe with molybdenum paste down there where those ratchet teeth are. Wipe on the crest of that spring there, the detent spring for that lever. There's a bit of cotton there, I'm just going to remove that, that's better. Put this in position, the pin must go behind that spring. Like that. Shim goes on in only one direction, otherwise you won't be able to get it to uh, fit. And the settings, the aperture settings lever fits on here. And there are three small screws that hold that in position. Just run those three screws down lightly to start off with and check that make sure there's no problem with the movement of that lever. It moves freely enough. I'll nip those three screws up. Now of course we checked that the aperture itself moved freely. So any stiffness here will be as a result of this lever. And there may be some distortion in the ring which would be causing that to be a bit stiffer than it might otherwise be. I'm just looking to see where that might be. And I think it's there. I'm just going to straighten that up slightly so that it's not so tight. Do I want scalpel. That's good. Okay. Any residual stiffness in there after you've decided that it's flat and it's not under tension in any way. Normally what I do is just put a spot of graphite powder underneath each of those three screw heads and then just work this backwards and forwards and you find that that graphite powder will certainly smooth things up. I'll show you how to do that. Just like that, then just work this backwards and forwards. Remove any excess, and I'll go and blow that excess away. That that's moving very freely now. That that flips backwards and forwards with no effort at all. Well, carrying on, let's get more of this assembled. Usually wipe through the centre of this lever with a with molybdenum paste, just a touch, it fits over this post, it's, it's got quite a strong spring on the back of that so it's sometimes hard to get it seated correctly. Now this flash contact here is certainly sticking out too far from the case so I'll just push that back. That may have been like that or I may have disturbed it when I was um, busy working on things. This lever in position, this is our moving flash contact. Looking at the shape of that moving flash contact, I think it was like that. Uh, it shouldn't have been, but it was. 
or have to adjust the moving flash contact, then that would certainly be the case. Let's check that that's seated and get the fixing screws in place. Plain screw at that end. And at the other end we've got our return spring. Now I didn't really like the shape of the return spring that was on there. Somebody reshaped it. So I'm just going to replace that with one that hasn't been improved. Some people can't help themselves. Every spring they come to, they uh, want to improve it. Either they think it needs more tension or it's the wrong shape or something. Or it's not a pleasing shape. Sometimes the springs are an unusual shape. And at first glance they may appear that they should be otherwise, that the bends should be wrecked more right angles or something like that, but usually that's not the case. Once you're familiar with the parts in question, you can spot when something's not quite right. Usually if people are building, changing the shape of springs in order to get something to happen that they want to happen, then it usually means there's a fault somewhere else that they're trying to compensate for. Okay, well that looks good. Quite pleased with the state of that. Here's our shutter release lever. We'll put that in place on the shutter. I'll check that that's nice and straight. It appears to be. It fits on here. Has to catch underneath the B lever so it lifts the B lever up and the spring has to be tucked down inside the case. Make sure that's tucked down nicely. So when the shutter's cocked the shutter release lifts this lever and this swings this away which allows the main cam to drive the shutter and release it. I'm just checking the state of that flash contact now. Yes, it doesn't make contact with that flash contact, so it means that certainly that should have been straighter, which means that I was right in thinking that the other contact had been bent out of shape previously. If there's too much stiffness with that flash contact what you find is that the shutter may be reluctant to fully open for the B position and it would certainly have some ill effect on shutter speeds in general if there was great resistance of the flash contact so it needs to make, but not, much, not too much more than make. So what I'm doing is I watch this opening, I watch the moving contact come across and touch the fixed contact, and if I see the fixed contact or the moving contact flex, I know that it's making contact, and therefore it should be electrically good. That, that looks good to me. Right, let's carry on. Right, well I think the main drive cam can go back in. So, I need to lubricate this with a little bit of molybdenum paste. There's a couple of points where it picks up the cam, the blade actuating ring. And that curved surface in particular there that's where it runs against the edge of the retard gear train. And that's quite a high friction area. That's under quite a lot of force. And it's just bearing on the edge. And if you have no lubricant there at all, it tends to be quite stiff in the action. Uh, as the metal's effectively galling. It's, 
it really damages the surface and it creates a high, great deal of resistance and it can actually cause shutter cocking racks to fail with that extra resistance. Now I'll just get this spring in place. This is a bit tricky because it's a, a good spring. Most of them have lost some of their tension over time. This one is probably not the original spring. It's probably a replacement from a previous shutter service. But it certainly has all its all the, the original tension that it would have had. Generally speaking they're somewhat tired these days. That's all working nicely. So I'll cock that again and I'll fit the retard gear train. So the re retard gear train I have cleaned this in the ultrasonic cleaner in naphtha and now I'm going and I've lubricated it with graphite powder there's a thread of cotton there I'm seeing the back of that make sure that lever is pulled back so that it's not sitting on top of the tag on the uh, blade actuating ring that should give us something like a second that wasn't bad probably a bit fast the self timer or the delay action that goes in here That's not seating correctly, it's just wind let that run down a bit. See if I can get that seated. That's better. This end was not sitting on behind that tab, it was actually sitting on top of it. That certainly wouldn't have worked. That runs down nice and smoothly. Okay, I'll check those three screws. This pinion, I'll just put a touch of molybdenum paste on the shaft of that. You could, you don't need much of anything on there, just to make sure that that's not rubbing or causing any friction. And I'll rub some molybdenum paste around the inside edge and around the outside edge of this piece. And put this into position. To hook the end of the spring over that post. That's the end of that spring look look like the, the loop on it's larger than it should be. Something's happened to that. We'll put that down to the uh, enthusiasms of the previous repairer I think because every spring seems to have had some adverse attention. the shutter speed settings cam plate here and I'll just run some molybdenum paste around the center and around here where it's going to operate the lever on the retard gear train. Let's get this in position. Make sure the B lever is not stuck under it. This should give us an eighth of a second give or take Something odd there, what's that? That's oh, right, just a bit of dirt.
that's not a hundred miles away, I notice that the pin here which tracks the cam is bent. It's um, done to adjust the speeds, but that's sort of bent a little bit out of shape there. I'm just going to straighten that back up. And judging from the shape of things, I'm going to need to bring the retard gear train in for in slightly for greater engagement. That's as, about as much as it'll go. I'll find the tool to straighten that pin up. Straighten that pin up slightly. And put everything back, see if I can get these speeds right. Yeah, certainly that loop on that spring is a funny shape, so someone's opened that up for reasons of their own. If it was the only spring on the shutter that was an odd shape, I would just shrug my shoulders and think of it as one of those things, but clearly somebody had an agenda to change the shape of every spring they came upon. That sounds pretty good. Right, I'm just going to put the retainer ring on the front of that shutter and go and test those speeds. See if they are appropriate. The eighth and fifteenth of a second sounded good and they are If they are right, everything else will fall into line, really. Unless something is seriously wrong, actually. Well, that took no time. Those speeds are bang on the money. I don't know why I use that machine, should just do it by ear. Anyway, let's get this piece in place. I suppose we should check that the self timer runs down nicely. That sounds good. Well, I can put the shutter back into its outer case now then. I'll just give this a quick wipe. It's worth making sure that the channel in here is free from any grit or any grease. You certainly don't want any old thick grease or anything in there. It should be fairly clean and dry. Otherwise what happens is that the, the action is, is just slow to move. So I just rub some molybdenum paste on that curved pusher inside and out and on the rack top and bottom surface and a curved surface there and drop these into position. cock the shutter and then fit the case to it like that. That lined up very nicely. Pull that into position, make sure my flash contact is good and get the screws in place. That one in the middle and the head of that screw serves to locate the shutter in the lens mount, in the, sh in the shutter mount, on the focus mount, I should have said. Alright, those two screws in, those two 
countersunk head screws are not the same diameter the finer one goes over here the thicker one goes over here if you mix them up it won't go well just tighten up the screw for our flash contact that doesn't need to be done up ridiculously tight you just need to take up the slack basically and the front control rings That lower surface I'll wipe that with some molybdenum paste and the inside and the outside edge. The top surface doesn't need any on it. And it's just to make sure that moves smoothly and freely in the, the mount here. Now the tag here needs to couple to the fork here on that lever. Otherwise your pointer on the aperture scale will not follow the diaphragm correctly. Why is that not wanting to move? That's better. That's good. Here's the scale ring that has the aperture numbers on it. That couples to that ring. That ring's not sitting flat. It must be bent slightly. Let's get that off and have a look at that. What is it about that? This tab at the end is bent at 90 degrees. It should point down slightly. I think it's hitting against the back of the lever. Let's try that now. That's better. It's sitting down flush now. That's another example of people who aren't familiar with something changing the shape of things because they think it should be a particular shape. And they're wrong. Well, people aren't always wrong in that case, but you need to be very familiar with things before you start changing the shape of components. Because generally speaking, the designer designed it in a particular way. If you're not familiar with how it should look, you better to leave things alone. And this, this shutter, just about every spring had received some undue attention. And likewise that tab on the end of the aperture settings thing there, that had been squared up. Somebody changed the angle of that arm to a neat 90 degrees. It shouldn't have been 90 degrees. Whoops, oh, I've got my retainer ring on there still, haven't I? No wonder that won't seat. Get this back on. Take the retainer ring off. This lens mount piece here that only locates in one position. There's a post on the mechanism plate that locates it. That post can be damaged if typically it becomes damaged if somebody tries to put their lens on in the wrong position. The lens bayonet's on, but if it's put on in the wrong position, it'll jam. And then when people try to unjam it, it usually bends that post and causes it to fail. Just checking that the aperture follows nicely here. Something's not working right. 
Oh, we're right down the end of the scale, aren't we? There we go. There's not much grip happening here. The aperture's not, the diaphragm's not moving as freely as it should. It's not gripping the shutter speed dial there. I think it's the shape of this tab. Yeah, it hasn't got enough tension. Okay. Alright. That's better. That should move. The shutter speed and the aperture should move together. They're intended to be coupled together. Now that had been bent out so that it didn't have enough tension. And as a result it was slipping. Because with a shutter like this, a light value type shutter, you set your light value down here, which say it might be... Oh, 10 would be a very dirty day, wouldn't it? Let's say 10. And as you move your shutter speed dial, the aperture should move with it. So you see you've got an 8 to the 15th, or 5.6 to the 30th, or f4 to the 60th, etc, etc. From 2 to 2 50th, through to f22 at half second. And all of those are equivalent exposures, because we've set the EV value here. Now that was slipping, it wasn't moving smoothly. Now I've got a bit of excess friction here, so I know that that retainer ring is probably too tight in that position. So we should get our click stops without there being any undue friction. Let's try it there. And I'll put its retaining screw in place. This would have come loose because somebody had grabbed that tab and pulled it out too far. That's good. That's moving nicely. Wipe that front surface, wipe around there, It all appears good. Now I just need to clean the lens and put put the lens back into the shutter. <laughs>